Ah, yes. The beautiful Loire River Basin is much more pleasant now that we've driven the English from the surroundings of Orléans. Indeed, my dear Etienne, but this is not the moment to bask in our success. For if we are to deliver our Dauphin to Rem for his coronation, we will need to expel the enemy from Tourelle. Mind you, this is no easy task. Milady, I would like to introduce you to Jean II, Duke of Alençon. Glad to make your acquaintance, Milady. After hearing of the plight of our innocent citizens in Orleans, I felt compelled to be here to assist you and your noble cause. Very well, then. Let's move on and destroy the rough in the English. Let's go, there's some headbanging to be done. I will head towards the vicinity of Tourell so I may scout the area. I shall inform you of any enemy activity in the area. And I shall head towards Chinon to rendezvous with the French siege forces, led by Dunois and Diliers. The English are retreating toward the west. We may either head west and take the initiative against them, or capture English camps due south. After a short introduction, we are now tasked to take over the city of Tourelle. We begin by fighting a small detachment of English troops right outside of the start area, and then we proceed to go south to defeat the English camps. English elements are quite easy to deal with, uh, you just have to go into the campment and kill every single English man that is alive in there and the camp becomes your property. Then we receive a message from Lord Talpo which advises us that he capture our good friend Jean de Metz and we will have to defeat him to obtain the key to free. Proceeding further south, we finally encounter the first English settlement we have to take over. Firing an explosive arrow into the camp triggers the boss to come out and fight us. But before we fight him, we have to defeat a gang of knights. Oh sweet sweet grinding. Following the battle with the knights, we go up into the watchtower to clear them from the archers firing at us non-stop. And a quick uh, 10 minute edit to remove the entire cleaning up of the camp, we're finally facing Sir William Glassdale, the leader of this encampment, who we promptly defeat and runs away. After killing every single English in the camp, it is finally ours, so we can keep moving on the small path. And by the way, don't worry, the other city has been clear because I had to reload because I got wasted in my first attempt. And I took a different path that I didn't record, so we actually have two cities done, two settlements done for the English Reconquista. At the end of this short path, we encounter a friendly blacksmith and a friendly grocer with a hidden chest that we promptly rob the content of. We decide to acquire a substantial amount of arrows because uh, they tend to do extremely well in this game, Ex especially explosive arrows have a little je ne sais quoi about them that makes them really shiny. But after a little pit stop at the uh, friendly blacksmith and grocer, we keep moving forward and clear more enemies. And we encounter Lord Talbot, who has the keys for a prison cell of Jean de Metz near Tourelle. So we have to promptly defeat him with uh, the help of a great number of arrows. But midway during the fight, the evil Englishmen decide to call in a gang of crossbowmen to fight on his side. That's where you see how treacherous these English dogs are, and we have a, a valid casus belly to slay them now. We can play a little bit of uh, Call of Duty Warzone right here in this game. And then mid-fight, Lord Talbot decides to taunt us a little bit more, which just drives a resolve to slay him. And with a little bit of sword fighting with Lord Talbo, we finally laid the killing blow on him, which makes him simply run away while dropping the key right on the ground for us to pick up and free Jean de Metz with it. Then we fend off a way out of this little wooded area and cross English troops to reach what seems to be a beautiful church. And it is indeed a church that was overrun by the English troops, so we make a quick work of them to free the old each site. And what a disgusting sight we have, this is atrocious, this is disgusting to see that the English dogs are able to desecrate a place of worship like that.
then we meet up with the French enforcement which triggers the attack on Turel. And that is pretty bad for us because we're in no position at all right now to take over Turel. At least I can have salvation knowing that Joanne d'Arc is able to overtake the entire English forces by herself. And we switch over to that here to clear up the remaining settlements we have in the area that the English still hold control over. We simply have to employ the meat grinder tactic which makes the enemy funnel into a small area to get crushed by our blades. After a few minutes of mindless massacring, we finally move into the encampment to clear the watchtower from these pesky archers. I don't know for you, but I find that Lahir's mace, when it connects, feels like it's really hitting hard. Then we get a beautiful fight against Alexander de la Pole. Midway through the fight, we receive an alerting message from Duke d'Alençon, who is engaged in combat. And the crazy man was attacking Tourelle all by himself and lost his entire army in the process while Lair got knocked out of combat. <laughs> you know what that means. Yep, a fresh new reload. We quickly take care of the RPG aspect by increasing dexterity because it seems to be the one of the most efficient stats to increase in the game as it has a direct impact on the speed you move around and it seems like you do a lot of moving around in this game. And right now we're moving into a new town, a friendly town where we meet a blacksmith, a grocer and a various number of civilian units that are ready to give us an important mission. And we quickly acquire a new piece of armor for Jeanne d'Arc. Better safe than reloading, you know what I mean? And the important mission is to go back to the Sack Church and speak with the cart driver there to bring back the valuables from the church into the city. Back at the church, the cartman is quite easy to find as he is sitting right outside the church, which is pretty weird when you think about it because carrying a little valuable might be prime target for raiding English troops. After bringing back the variable, the priest is able to offer us a nice pay by giving us the Lippe de Saint-Catherine de Fierbois, which is a suck at a bowl sword. If you played Diablo, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When well, this game, you got some gems to suck it, but these gems are actually just crosses that you're being given for completing tasks. And the priest gave us quickly your next task. There are some survivors from the church raid that are hidden in the forest. So we have to go through the forest, clear out the English resistance, and free those poor French. We keep clearing the jungle and free another French victim. But the rest of the clearing is pretty uneventful and we actually reach the same village where Jeanne d'Arc is with the Duke d'Alençon. And the two risk a bee. 
and from there we take a horse because you know I got a horse outside or something it's just it's just so weird to drive around with a horse and try to attack it just it doesn't feel natural it feels like the character is a robot something weird like that but anyhow we still have two more villagers to rescue that are stuck in the forest and they're actually just behind the camp they could have walked right in from where they are but we don't really care we rescue them bring them back to the camp and the priest rewards us with a fairy cross to and crossed into the Saint Catherine blade we quickly incorporate into the Saint Catherine de Fierbeau blade. And along with the Duc d'Alençon, we go back all the way to the village where Alexander de la Pole is to defeat him once and for all without dying this time around. And after a long, arduous, multi-minute combat, we finally strike the final blow on Alexander and he runs away just like the coward he is. And we proceed to clean up the rest of the camp from all English soldiers. And to be honest, fighting in a watchtower like that with uh, a huge halberd must be really awkward at minimum. After taking the camp, we can finally meet up with Lahir. We stuck between two camps, and I, I really don't remember how I got stuck there with him. <laughs> Moving beyond where Lahir is chilling out, we encounter a camp with William de la Pole that we have to defeat. We quickly drop the old town meme because it just doesn't work, and we use a proven working tactic the meat grinder. After long arduous combat, we keep getting more and more English people rushing in while we're trying to fight off William de la Pole on the beaches. And after having an astronomical amount of casualties, we're fighting William de la Pole and all of his henchmen with only de la Hire and Duc d'Alençon. After a very very long time of cutting content because I feel like it's always the same content coming back up, we're finally able to defeat William de la Pole and as you probably expect by now, he runs away. And in the camp we find some captive French which we expressly liberate from their bonds. And these men are the militia of Saint Augustine, the fortress near La Tourelle, and they give us a key to reach the siege equipment on the top of the tower of Saint Auguste. We do a quick work of dispatching all the archers around the tower, and then we move on the top to destroy all the English using the siege equipment to defend the siege city of La Tourelle. Quickly dispensing of these siege equipment will help us tremendously in our effort to retake La Tourelle from the English. Once the path has been cleared, we move in with Jean d'Arc and a couple of explosive arrows to clear out the uh, stranded archers and enemy infantry that are laying around the city, uh, just like playing Counter-Strike here, really. And we engage in the largest battle I've seen in the game yet, which just feels so great. I wish they had less archers because archers can very easily pick AI troops apart. Then we pull a quick loop around the back of the city that we had to free our good friend Jean de Metz. Quickly, free me. I hope you brought the key to unlock. Then we quickly save Jean and start fighting the enemy troops. And by the time we get back to the front gate, it has been opened. And inside, 
Jean de la Pole is waiting for us for a final fight. But first we have pressing duties. We have to reach the ramparts to be able to slay the archers that are shooting at our troops. In the ambush the skirmish, Dillier is badly wounded and has to retreat immediately, which is pretty bad ogre for the French forces at this point. Chandak is able to deal a massive blow to the English forces that are in the middle of the town by defeating them at a speed of light. Then La Pucelle used her bow and arrow to slay Jean de la Pole, who, as you know, just runs away. And we achieve victory. Another glorious victory for Jean d'Arc on her mission to save France. Now, to be honest, that was quite an exhaustive mission, as you can see from the completion time. But don't be afraid, because next time we're gonna get a nice little surprise.